you pulled like a string until you just like snap. Welcome back to Behind the Edit, your go-to podcast for unpacking the actual reality behind reality TV. I'm Lachlan Gurdon. And I'm Talia Pritchard. And today we're joined by not one, but two grooms, or ex-grooms, I should say, from Married at First Sight. Yes, we've been speaking to a lot of brides so far, but now it's time that we get the groom's perspective on this year's season. What about the men is what I always say. What do they have to say? We're finally (laughs) giving the men a platform. (laughs) As they deserve. So first we spoke with Ollie Skelton. Mm -hmm. He was from last year's season of Maths. He was with Tani Cook, a friend of the show. She was on an earlier episode of Behind the Edit. They broke up last year, but Ollie has a great perspective on how the producers might influence a couple's storyline in the experiment. Yeah, and he and Tani were a success story for their season, but I found it really interesting some of the stuff he also said about not applying for the show and how some of the grooms may be approached to even be on the show in the first place too. The other groom that I spoke to is one of the biggest villains from all 11 seasons of Married at First Sight, none other than Bryce from season eight. Yeah, okay. I'm interested to hear about this chat. I wasn't part of it, obviously. So you're going to play me the voice memos later of what Bryce had to say. Yes, we've had a lot of comparisons so far to Tori and Jack from this year's season, to Bryce and Melissa from season eight. I think the big thing is that Bryce and Melissa are still together. They're one of the five success stories from the whole series. They're married in real life. They've got twins. So he has some advice for the villains on this year's season. And he also shares whether he sees any similarities between Jack and Tori to himself and Melissa. Yeah, to be honest, back in the day when I was recapping the show for another platform, I wasn't a huge Bryce fan. But I am keen to hear what he has to say about the comparisons. Yeah, I'm looking forward to getting your thoughts on that. But first, I want to hear your thoughts on Family Week and this week on Maps. <laughs> what are your thumbs up and thumbs down? Okay, I thought Family Week was a bit of a flop. But one, my thumbs up for the week was actually Ridge. Okay. So I've done a complete 180. I yeah. know last week I was like, oh, immature, don't call yourself an alpha male, which I still stand by. Just don't. Let's drop the term. But... <laughs> I can't even believe I'm about to admit this. A scene with Ridge and Jade made me actually tear up. But when she read out her letter to him, because they were kind of going through the accelerated tasks for confession week and stuff, she read out the letter about being a single mom, her ex cheated on her when she was pregnant with her baby, and he was just so comforting to her and he really listened to her and he was really engaged. And I know the bar is bloody low out there for straight men but I found it a really heartwarming scene so that's my thumbs up for the week we rarely see a groom actually handle the confessions task letter with so much respect and I think he was kind of a lesson for future grooms and how they should go about the experiment and treat their partner with respect absolutely if he just cuts out the deece now he's probably the top groom on the show (laughs) what about your thumbs down for the week okay my thumbs down of the week goes to Tori um Not because of the matching tattoos, do what you want, babe, but the dinner party hypocrisy around slamming Timothy, who has his flaws, but then also being like, I would never stand for Timothy's behavior, that kind of stuff, when she's sitting next to Jack, who made one of the most (laughs) disgusting comments at a dinner party that we've seen in the whole history of maths. I just thought, you got to look in the mirror. It's clear that the experts also noticed that, so I'm glad that they are fully calling out the bad behavior this season. It's very refreshing. Yeah, for once. It's good. What are your thumbs up and thumbs down? I'm going to give my thumbs up and thumbs down to the same moment. (laughs) I think it... (laughs) The same moment. To the same moment. It caused some mixed feelings for me. At the start of the week, we saw our intruder couple, Madeline and Ash, leave the show. I'm devastated by this, by the way. It's a thumbs up because we rarely see a couple actually be allowed to leave not at a commitment ceremony. Mm -hmm. So we saw at the commitment ceremony that Ash wrote stay, Madeline wrote leave, and normally they would be forced to stay until the following week. We did see with Natalie and Collins, this wasn't the case. And again, with Ash and Madeline, they were allowed to leave immediately after. So I think thumbs up to caring for the mental health of the participants, not forcing them to stay in a toxic situation. Mm -hmm. They were both allowed to leave, which I think was great. But I would say that moment was a thumbs down for me because they were arguably one of the most entertaining couples this season. I wanted to see more of her psychic predictions at the dinner parties. She was only in like three or four episodes all up. Maybe not even. Like, I think she was gone way too soon. I'm sad that they had to go, but well done for actually sticking to your guns and leaving the show on your terms. 
I think so too. And we didn't get to say goodbye to her, which was sad because it just showed Ash packing these bags and leaving. And I feel, I feel very similar to you in the sense of I wish they stayed around for the entertainment sake of the show, for the dinner parties and the commitment ceremonies because I was waiting for Maddie to have yeah. some visions for some other people, not just Ash and not just her life, but be like, tell us where the future of these other people are going. Exactly. I mean, maybe she'll return for the reunion. Hopefully. Maybe we'll finally learn what happened at the Dead Ball. But unfortunately, <laughs> this week they left the show and we'll just have to deal with that. I do feel a bit sad for Ash too, just because he did seem, and it's hard to tell by only a week in and sometimes you don't get everyone's true colours, but he did seem quite there genuinely keen to make a connection. You've got a crush on Ash, don't you? <laughs> Is it that obvious? <laughs> Ash is my type, I will say that. <laughs> but my type hasn't got me very far in life, so I'm trying to <laughs> take it with a grain of salt. <laughs> Hopefully, if Ash is listening, he can come on behind the edit. <laughs> let's get matching tattoos, Ash. <laughs> well, we need to get into Jack and Tori's matching tattoos, so let's play our chat with Ollie Skelton. Ollie, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Thank you. How does it feel watching things back now that you're out of the woods of filming maths and now you're recapping it? Does it feel weird? I remember when people would do this last year from like the previous seasons and I was like, just give it up, guys. Like, who cares, <laughs> mate? Now here I am. So <laughs> very happy you came in. <laughs> We know participants often ask former cast members for advice when they're going on maths. Did anyone from this season reach out to you during filming or before or currently? I had like a few people reach out. Um, I think th there was somebody from Perth that reached out. Um, a dude. Is is one of the intruders from Perth? Oh, I don't think Ridge. Um, oh, Stephen. Stephen. Stephen reached out and um, we were going to catch up um, – I think when Tani and I were both in Perth in September or something, we were going to catch up. Okay. Obviously, um, Tani mentioned that uh, Sarah, Sarah, is it Sarah or Sarah? Both work. <laughs> <laughs> it keeps changing. Um, yeah, she reached out to, um, yeah, and it was always just, I think because Rupert and I, um, we did a podcast episode where we were talking about um, just advice for the upcoming cast and like, being friendly with the press, even though the maths higher ups would tell you, do not do that. Don't be friends with these people. And they specifically say, don't be friends with the ex cast either. Really? Because they're going to, they want to talk to you and they're going to try and da da da. Um, they're like, don't be friends with them. So I specifically remember those two things don't be friends with the wow. press and don't be friends with um, the ex cast. And I think in retrospect, they don't want anybody with any experience that's done the show or reported on the show to say, hey, don't do this yeah, mm. or hey, do this. You Did can, you yeah. reach out to any former participants? Oh, yeah. So I remember in my pre-interview, well, so, uh, one of the executive producers um, saying that I reminded them of Al and I was like, um, who the I was like, who the hell is Al? And my sister used to watch the show and I was like, oh, she's like, oh yeah, he's good. Da, 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 da. So I tried to reach out to his management. Then I tried to DM him and he was like, Al's not taking message requests right now. I was like, that's not a good bloody sign okay, of yeah. like in terms of like the public. And then I, I think I called the management and um, they were like, oh no, he's currently away in New Zealand when actually he was in Spain. Um, to oh, my show, do you? That's yeah. Nice. <laughs> but yeah, so no, I tried to hit up Al, but that was about it. Um, you mentioned your sister telling you about Al. Does that mean you hadn't watched many previous seasons before you went on the show? No, I'd never watched it. So you were approached, I'm assuming, not yeah. applied. Yeah. Yeah. So seven months before I was on air, sorry, I was on, I was getting married. My ex ex girlfriend, her mum was watching the show, and I remember saying to her why are you watching that crap? And then seven months later, I just <laughs> it to did um, you do any research? Like, did you watch old episodes before you were being filmed or were you like, I just want to go in completely blind? I tried to, but I hated it. I was like, this is just so annoying. <laughs> and um, I kind of was just like taking the mick. Like I didn't really think that I was going to get on it. I didn't think I was going to get approved. And then when they called me and they said, we found you a match, um, I was like, oh, and the realization of like the enormity of it all um, really sunk in. And um, 
I actually said no. And I sent them this massive email just saying, essentially, thank you for the opportunity, but I can't really think of a reason as to why I do want to get married. So the next day I get a call and they start talking about, they were like, we can't, we don't want to tell you this, but the girl is um, amazing. The girl is awesome. You, We really think you're going to love um, the girl. Then I started to think, well, like you get to go and live in Sydney. You know, I was from Perth, live in Sydney in like an apartment and you've got someone um, that these experts think is going to be like is your perfect match. I feel like not embracing that opportunity mm. and you know also you, know, you get to be on television like you you you, you can watch it with your mates yeah. like yeah so i said hell yeah and um the experience was i was so fortunate with the experience yeah when you say you were approached what does that actually mean for viewers is it an instagram dm yeah, what a, happened it's a dm okay and they were like hey are you single looking for love and i'd broken up with my partner i was like yeah, but I was only gonna do. I was only gonna do it if emotionally I had, um, I was available and like I was open to the idea of love. And then yeah, I remember them calling me and I was freaking out, man. So just because you were approached doesn't mean you didn't go through the same application process and all of that. You didn't fast track anything, I guess. I think I fast tracked like the 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 initial one that everybody okay. does. I think I fast tracked that. Like I didn't have to put a lot of effort into that because they were like, hey, we just need you to fill this out as a precaution mm -hmm. or, or whatever um and i was just like doing like na um yeah. sometimes or, <laughs> whereas I, I think a lot of people that that questionnaire is extensive i'm not 100 percent sure of this year's cast but i would say like 90 percent of the males in last year's cast um were approached wow. um generally speaking the guys that they are looking for maybe aren't applying but i think 90 percent of the girls um, applied last year or something like that's that. That's interesting. I think it makes sense though because I feel like I've even met my old PT, for example. Like you hear of them scouting gyms and scouting bars in Sydney and all sorts of things to try and get yeah men and I to think, go on the show. I think that's how they used to do it. Like it was very much cold open or they'd go to a club and kind of look. Now I think the way that the Instagram algorithm, if they look at a few accounts with two – like 2,000 followers or 3,000 followers that are guys between the age of 20 and 30, that Instagram explore algorithm yeah. now gives, it, it just like will be feeding that to all these producers. Mm. And so they just scroll that. <laughs> I think. That's interesting That's wild. technique. I yeah. think. I, I don't know. I've got all these hunches. Yeah, yeah. I'm not 100% sure. If we start unpacking this season. Yes. This week was family week, but things kicked off with Jack and Tori making a bold statement after the dinner party and the commitment ceremony. So as you remember, Jack said to Lauren's husband, Jono, muzzle your woman. Mm -hmm. It didn't end well, but this is how they resolved it in their relationship. I'll show you a clip. Tori has responded to the events of the past week with a bold and permanent statement. Are you nervous? Getting a matching tattoo with her husband. I just think it'll be a bit of like a you to everyone. What do you think, babe? Pretty so. Pretty so. I don't yeah. have a tattoo. That must be don't painful wrong, right there, though, the I'll believe. The was woeful, but can't rewind life. So let's move on. We are past arguments now. We are at a point where we're like just living La Vida Loca. What did, did he get her name? No, they what got these it? kind of like matching, nearly cupid -y looking. Like cherubs. When I first watched that, I thought he was going to get a name or something like that. I thought he was going to get, <laughs> yeah. that would be bold. I don't know what, like, is it starting to be like Jack and Tori versus the world? It feels that way. Even the way she kind of is like, we're past arguing now. Right. <laughs> we're at the stage of permanently getting inked for each other. I don't know. I feel like she's just got eyes for him to stand by him. Mm -hmm. He's happy with that. And then maybe it is. Maybe it brings people closer together to feel like they're facing some sort of adversity from everyone else, that they feel more united. And at the start, it was sort of Tory being the being able to handle, I think she used that word, handle him, like mm. handle that yep. behavior. Have they shifted it to be where it's like, well, now potentially she is not and 
she is being somewhat manipulated by him. People online have thought of it as him branding her or something. I mean, she would have had to be willing to get the tattoo, so it's not like he Mm. forced her to do that. Yeah, I saw those comments, but I don't know if I fully agree with it. And maybe it's the way the show is making it look, but it kind of looked like it was her idea. Yeah, to go. They're both tatted up already, so it's it. probably not as serious as we would think. Or... I would say, as someone that does have nine tattoos, the more you get, the less you think about it okay, as you right. go along. Right. That is my personal yeah. experience, anyway. But but I was saying, like from a whole, like is is the the story? I feel like the storyline is a mirror mirroring um, Bronte and Harrison from last year. At this point, yeah, right? it's like the the behavior at the start. Um, that's toxic and is identified and then it becomes um well it's them against it's them against everyone Mm -hmm. and um you know i think bronte would say i'll stand by my husband and i think it was kind of at the same period of time i find it quite interesting that i didn't think that there would be such similar storylines at play Mm. Uh, and I hadn't watched many of the full seasons in previous years, but um, it does feel like there's room for interpretation and there's room for these characters to to find their own way in, in, and do things slightly differently. But it does seem like they there are so many carbon copies. Would you liken Tori to Bronte too in the way she's like kind of falling under Jack's spell? Because I feel like last year it was really much like, it was kind of like, Bronte all of a sudden seemed to have this switch on TV where she was in love with Harrison and we didn't see it coming and we're kind of like, where did this come from? Mm. Did it play out like that when you guys were filming and at dinner parties, were you just surprised all of a sudden when they just put on this united front? I just, I don't think anybody bought it. Mm. Okay. They they did have a switch and I think there was like leaked conversations later on that said that they they had conspired to to just be really really good then it did become it manifested into this real thing of like it is us against everyone and they actually did start to like each other this is purely my opinion yeah. um but then it was like i feel like in that moment that when they did start to maybe both like each other they let down their walls again and they stopped playing this character and they realized that oh shit, like the stuff that we that made us not get along at the start is what is making us um yeah fall apart again um, but yeah, to Jack and Tori, it's hard to say. It's hard to say because now that I'm watching it and I see a similar storyline playing out, I'm like, maybe they're just in love. Maybe they are in love. Like I've heard that they're together now. Yeah. Um, so mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm not sure. But um, I think it's. <laughs> I think Jack is 100% this year's Harrison. Do you think knowing that they're together now, it changes the editing at all. Like when a couple is still together at the end of the experiment, the producers might include certain scenes, something like that to create the narrative where it makes sense that they work out at the end. True. I think they definitely didn't want these guys to work out at the end. And maybe that was kind of like what Harrison and Bronte were going. They were like, these guys don't want us to make it to the end. And so a middle finger would be to say, well, guess what? We're going to make it and we're going to be in love. Yeah, I guess the circumstances and the pressure of the whole experiment can make you bond, right, with that person that you're with, probably in a deeper way than you would in a normal relationship because you're not facing all that kind of stuff. So, like, if you have that us versus them mentality, is it almost like this deeper emotional attachment or even a trauma bond (laughs) to get you through? Yeah, I'm no psychologist, but I would say that there is this, you do go through an experience that is incredibly taxing and every every time i see uh i see anybody from the show there is this kinship Mm. um and it's just so like subconscious when you look back at your experience now and obviously you and tani were a success story at the end of it Mm. do you think that there was anything you two did that strengthen your bond or made you superior to the other couples in the experiment because you can see certain couples they're not going to work out by the way that they're entering or the way they're communicating is there a secret to success in your mind i remember feeling incredibly insecure about the progress that say a duncan and Alyssa had about the the halfway point um and i was like oh these guys just like they're like 
Cin- the Cinderella story. This is this is so beautiful. But then I kind of just like quietened down my ego and was like, I think the best. Uh, I think it's just like we're just gonna run our own race, and we did. And I think we were just one of the last ones standing. <laughs> but I, I remember that that final vows day. Yeah, just was like was definitely one of the happier moments in Tiny and I's whole relationship. Well, you guys are kind of touted as this Gen Z power couple too throughout the show and maybe the edit. Were there ever scenes or conflict that you guys had that were cut out that you kind of wish were shown just to show like the real scope of a relationship? Uh, I don't know if I wish they were shown. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Because I feel like it could have been quite polarizing for the both of us. Um, That last month there um, was when like cracks started to show I think a little bit in in how we um how we handled conflict it actually brought us closer together um those those arguments that we did have but as to whether or not I would want people to show see that I mean yeah it could give you the full scope of a relationship but um (laughs) I don't know yeah (laughs) too much reality (laughs) yeah too much reality well let's take a quick break and then we can get into family week and all the drama that happens there Okay, talking about some of the family visits, Timothy has been having a few little tanties lately. He doesn't seem super happy in the experiment. And Lucinda's dad gave him a bit of a stern talking to, but he had some rogue advice for him that we'll show you now. And then we want to get your reaction on it. How old is Timothy? 51, I yeah. think. He's getting stern advice from the dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From Lucinda's dad. How old is Lucinda's dad? In his 70s. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> It's not for me to tell you what to do. But we'd love to see a, a little bit more sort of action on your behalf. Yeah. Could be a yeah. one night stand or could be anything, but just try it. Did I miss you? Did you say you need to have a one night stand with my daughter? Yes, I did. <laughs> a one night stand? <laughs> Is that not. They've been living together for four months. There's no one night stand anymore. If that had been me. I don't know what I would have done, dude. I would have been like, that's odd as hell. And what the hell is that guy wearing as well? That was what he went with for the parent. It's a bold statement. For the parent teacher night. That's what he went with. (laughs) Your wife's dad telling you to. I don't think that would happen a lot. Well, this is week five for the experiment. Lucinda and Timothy, they haven't slept together yet. Do you think at this point it's almost too late to start a romantic spark? Or what is your thoughts? They're spending every day together. Like they would be spending every day together. So it's not like a regular relationship that, you know, you go out on the dating scene, you might see these people like 15 hours a week or something, Mm. like not including sleeping time or whatever. But they're seeing each other. 15 hours was the wedding day. Yeah. Right. (laughs) So for them to, if it's not happening then, it's not happening. Do you think there should be a cutoff point for these kind of couples if we're five weeks into the experiment? If, they do, if they're not having sex, they're if you're not having home. sex, go home. The, John's like, get out I of here. I feel like Alessandra would be the one to send them home. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, John's taking on like a stern kind of daddy vibe this season though. So. Is he not always stern kind of daddy vibe? I know, it's, it's coming up. The mo- As soon as the mohawk went down for me, that's when he <laughs> yeah, became true. quite sterner. That's when that's he true. just, serious. every season he, he falls a little bit more into the chair, I feel like, and he just <laughs> like, he just becomes like, he just can't have enough. I, I love John. Man. Do you think the experts though should be sending people home if they just developed a strong friendship? They should, but if the characters are good, they want them to stay the whole bloody time. Yeah. yeah. If the characters are bad and the relationship's good, they're going to try and find a way to break that thing up. <laughs> like I've heard things with um, Cassandra and Tristan from um, Collins um, that they were told from producers to um, wrap it up, like break it up or whatever. Mm. Really? I don't know that. I'm not 100% sure on that. Okay, I'm just speaking gobbledygook. So. Interesting. Were you and Tani ever told to spice things up? Or- Why do you make that accusation, Lachlan? <laughs> Why? Because we were boring? Is that why? Because you saw us and you went, come on. Well, I actually... Next scene. (laughs) There was 
obviously all the couples there was a time the- when I fell asleep <laughs> watching the show and I woke up and you were still on television and I cried well all no. the couples this season they had the family visit except Lauren and Jono we didn't see them have their family visit yes. and an insider told me that it was because it was too boring the producers basically cut it and I think it's fair to say in your season you might have been shown the least amount <laughs> Which was saying that essentially Ugh. you worked out, it was a success story yeah. and people watch the show for drama. So it's clear that yeah. if you weren't having drama, you wouldn't be aired. Yeah, definitely not boring. Maybe yeah. just too perfect by exactly. the show standards. No, I think we were boring. Well, I didn't give a shit about like making a big song and dance or calling. Like I just had a bubble. It was just me and Tans. And I didn't want to, I didn't want to pop that bubble. I didn't want to say, what the hell are you doing with your relationship? I didn't want like somebody to start attacking us because we yeah. were just... Everything was smooth sailing and we were we were in the process of falling in love. Did anyone so, ever encourage you though to speak out or make more of a moment at the dinner parties? Near the end, I feel like we were shown a, a lot more and I feel like I definitely found my voice because I was, yeah, I was, I was petrified. Like, you ever been in a room with 24 like extroverts? You then it find sounds a place. terrifying. Yeah. You find your place and sometimes your place isn't there the it's more introverted but i also know that i'm a slow burn i always feel like i'm just like quite reserved at the start and then i'm like analyzing and when i feel com- completely comfortable yeah. after a full i kind of know the peaks and troughs of everyone um that's maybe when i start talking yeah um which is you know, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but it's analytical. <laughs> With listener Timothy, I've seen a potential spoiler online. I want to get your thoughts. Yes. She commented on one of his Instagram posts back in October, which would have been after the show had wrapped, I assumed. She wrote, my hunky ex, which I would say assumes that they're no longer together. They were exes, but they ended on a good term. That's bizarre. But as someone that made it all the way through the experiment, what were the rules of keeping your relationship under wraps or going out in public together while the show was airing? Well, we were fine because we were together. Yeah. So they were like, go frolic for yourself really? because we were together. So if we get snapped, what does it look like? It yeah. could be during the show. You know, you had to keep your ring on you the whole time. Um, mine ended up just being $10 ring from LaVisa because I, I shook mine down the, the bin chute. Um <laughs> On purpose or accidentally? <laughs> yeah, that was during one of our fights. I was like, <laughs> no, no, no. I, I shook the rubbish and it fell off. So <laughs> I think, I'm not 100% sure. So I had like one of those $10 La Visa ones for like the last three weeks to take it off, manky green. Um, <laughs> and then Janelle gave me hers. So um, yeah, I was using that. I don't know where it is now, though. <laughs> Could be a bit of a cursed one, though. <laughs> like, From Janelle. True. Cursed hand now down. that I think about it. Now that I think, if I had to lay it to a moment, it was the transfer of rings. Uh. <laughs> Let's take another quick break and then we can unpack the dinner party drama. Okay, the dinner party stuff is spicing up. It feels like, this is my theory, <laughs> unfounded. Okay. I kind of feel like maybe there's some producers in people's ears to spice up the dinner party because mm. things have been going relatively smoothly for even our more dramatic couples in yep. the last week or so. They seem to be on pretty good terms. So we have Jaden and Timothy facing off in this week's dinner party. Tori and Timothy also have a moment and then Cass and Tori have a moment. Mm. But before all of this happens, we have a very public breakup with Ben and Ellie, which is the clip we're going to show you now. I don't believe we're meant to be with each other. He's just broken up with her in front of the whole table. You realise tonight that you didn't want to be with Ellie, you decided to tell everybody. Is this everybody. the first time you've had this conversation? Is, this the first time, so is that the first time you've heard this? That's f- rich. Ben, you decided to have that communication in front of all of us right yes. now. That's what you're doing. So you think you're better with friends? Yes. Why would he even send that gift if he's now saying that he knows he doesn't want to be with her? And this inconsistency must be so confusing and hurtful for her. I'm going to call you out on that because that is not right. Everyone gets to witness my my broken heart. Breaking up with somebody at the dinner party around um, other people, it certainly doesn't give uh, an opportunity for the person being broken up with to process. It's just such a heightened environment. 
the whole show. Everything is so heightened. Um, I think people are always like, how do they say this shit? Or how do they do this shit? But it's bright lights and these cameras and these moments and alcohol and fighting and tension and living together. I'm sure that Ben would regret that, doing that in terms of the time and place, especially if they haven't um, spoken about it before. All this crazy stuff that happens is because yes, you're pulled like a string until you just like snap. And I always feel like with the show as well, like it scratches the surface of you and then you've got to see who you are on television. And I think some people don't like it. Ben's made some pretty scattered decisions on the show, particularly this week where he wanted to stay. He wrote Ellie a song, Mm -hmm. then he disappeared. Or he disappeared, then wrote her the song and then... Wanted to meet her on the beach and then dumps her in front of everyone. Mm -hmm. Do you think he would have, in theory, like this is all us speculating, I guess. Do you think he would have come up with that idea on his own? Or do you think (laughs) as a way out, he was just like, I can just do it now in front of cameras and then therefore it's done. The scattered decisions, Mm. super reflective of the time in terms of the contestants. Like, I don't think it is week five for them. I think it's like week six or seven. Mm -hmm. Um. And I remember that is exactly how I felt in, in the show. Because at this stage, it's just incredibly taxing. The, the early hours, all this stuff. And so for him to be scattered in his decision making is like super reflective of the, the six weeks just in this incredibly high stress environment. Knowing what you know about maths and from your experience, do you have any hopes for this year's couples to make it last? Well, I've heard that some of them are still together, right? In terms of my experience, you can make it on the show and you can fall in love. It's about setting up your life in the aftermath. That is super important for longevity. If I could go back and do a few things differently, um, I definitely would have done that. What kind of things would you do Well, I never would have taken that ring from Janelle because it's (laughs) the cursed cursed ring. (laughs) (laughs) You'll go back to the moment that you're taking the rubbish (laughs) down and you'd be like, yeah. Before we let you go, we've got a game, Kiss, Marry, Leave. Yeah. Who do you want to kiss? I liked the medium. I liked the vibe of the medium, whose name Madeline. is Madeline. I just thought she was, uh, she had a buzz. She had an aura buzz. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I want to marry Lucinda. She is so like giving, you know, I feel like you see the whole her in every scene, which is so beautiful. And who am I leaving? I don't know. I feel like I would clash with Tori a little bit. I don't know. Yeah. You don't want to get matching tattoos? No. I mean, not a tattoo <laughs> guy, personally. Maybe that's what it is. I'm not sure. And finally, we have the famous honesty box for you. Wow. The show doesn't have a huge success rate. How much pressure did you feel post-show to stay in a relationship as one of the success stories? And do you think navigating a relationship in the public eye helped or hindered things? Um, okay, so the first part of that question, um, how much pressure do you feel post-show to stay in a relationship as one of the success stories? I always said that I didn't feel the pressure um, of that. I always felt like if it wasn't working, I like I wanted to work on it. But um, if it wasn't going to work, then I was happy to say, hey, we gave it our best shot. However, like if I was in retrospect and like upon reflection, there is obvious pressures and I think also pressures of commitments going to this stuff doing this stuff like all the things that come with it um definitely like takes it toll its toll do you think navigating a relationship in the public eye helped or hindered things it definitely hindered things yeah it definitely hindered things externally there's so much going on you know where it's like if it was just Tani and I not on the show it's um it's completely different yeah what advice then would you offer the couples that come out of this year's season take the time to stop and reflect and you've just gone on this crazy journey together and you're still together so like you've got the ability to work through a high pressure environment but it gets even more chaos on the outside um where, the const- where, there's a, where there's less constraints and curfews. So my advice would be taking time to stop, reflect 
and then um, work on your goals as a couple. That's what I would say, yeah. And we know um, fans of this show can get quite intense too. Do you have any words or advice to people watching the show? They're never as good as they seem and they're never as bad as they seem. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. It was fun. Okay, so I've been dying to hear what Bryce had to say to you. As I did mention before, wasn't a huge fan of him on the show. I think the great thing about shows like this, though, is they are really polarizing at the best of times. And there have been times, even I guess as someone that's recapped the show before, where I'll watch someone's behavior on screen and not like it. But what they do after the show can prove a lot of fans, including myself, Ron about our impressions because him and Melissa have made it work they have a beautiful family now they've kind of even taken a step back from the spotlight of maths which I do find quite refreshing as well yeah so I'm keen to hear what he had to say to you it's interesting because at the start of the season people were comparing Tori and Jack to Harrison and Bronte from last year's season as things have progressed we've now seen a bit more of a similarity between Bryce and Melissa from season eight Here is what Bryce had to say about whether he actually saw any similarities. Hey guys, uh, yeah, look, I agree. The way Jack and Tori are being portrayed does feel very similar to listen myself uh, from the parts I've seen of the show anyway. Tori especially uh, definitely has that same kind of narrative that Liz received with agreeing with everything that her husband does say or things he did and it doesn't look like she ever spoke up against it, which I know 100% for Liz anyway was never the case. Uh, she spoke up many times towards me and also against the group. I remember one particular dinner party where Liz spoke up against Beck when she was going at me and just kind of told her to go stick it and put it in a place. But they never showed that because it didn't really fit the character that they were trying to portray of Liz being a quiet, shy, naive girl. And yeah, I kind of feel like Tori's kind of getting that same sort of feel. And from what I've heard from a few people, she definitely spoke up on a number of times that we just haven't seen it, which is disappointing. But it does seem quite similar where the group does seem to be against Jack and Tori. Like the group on our season were against Liz and myself constantly. Uh, they were more focused on our relationship than their own. Uh, and it just kind of goes to show that, yeah, maybe that's a... Jack and Tori are being genuine and people aren't happy with that because it's working. I don't know. Every relationship is different on that experiment. So I think too that after 11 years, participants are definitely aware of how to act to get more camera time or air time or get a more favorable edit on the show. And producers love people inserting themselves in drama. And I just think, yeah, that's it's what the show is about these days. The thing with doing that though is that more often or not, comes undone pretty quickly after the show's wrapped up on TV and the true colours definitely start to shine through. As like my opinion, we've seen with a few participants over the last couple of years, there's no doubt about that. But uh, look, with Liz and myself, I think we've just been ourselves after the show and we've been genuine and our lives have grown naturally. So I think if Jack and Tori are still genuinely together and they do genuinely have that bond, it will start the show over the next couple of months after the show's wrapped up on TV and Yeah, I don't know. I think that's why maybe we've developed quite a loyal following and even changed people's perspective on us as a couple and even myself to some degree. It's just, yeah, I can only speak on behalf of myself, but I certainly don't try and portray this personality that everyone loves me and loves everything about us. We know that and we're accepting of it. It's it's part of life. So it's just one of those things. But at the end of the day, if you stay true to yourself, uh, that will come across after the show and any villain tag will ease up over time so look people said that i would never work in radio again afterwards people love saying that but yeah even reported false articles on it saying i was sacked from jobs but yeah look end of the day i'm working in radio now so it's not all doom and gloom if you are a villain on the show and history i guess even shows too that villains are the ones that seem to do the best after the show go figure there you go go be a villain no, I know I know that's not what he's saying. I liked hearing that perspective because I think he's right on a couple of things, which is not something I thought I would say a few <laughs> years ago, to be fair. I think it is a real shame when we don't see people like Melissa or Tori having those moments where they do push back on their husbands yeah. because I think that adds to the journey, right? And it adds to the viewer's understanding of like why they may be be with this man and how the relationship works because if they are pushing back in certain moments or they're having these conflicts or arguments but then communicating and getting through them 
you can see how they are forming a stronger base for a relationship than what other people may yeah. be. They're just smooth sailing all the way through. So I do think it's a shame that we don't get to see the women playing that role too. And we only just see the men's role as being these potentially coercive influence over yeah. their life. I also like when he's speaking that he doesn't seem to hold a lot of resentment for the show and his betrayal or what happened because he was at some point probably the most hated man in Australia yeah. and he just seems very matter of the fact he seems like down the line this is what happened but we managed to put that behind us and move on and create this nice life for ourselves yeah. so I can only commend to that to be honest and I guess what happens after the show is what we've seen with they've gotten married in real life they have twins now he has fully moved on from the show that was three seasons ago. Mm. So he's just a great example that even if you are a villain on the show, things can work out well after. And also just because your relationship is portrayed negatively on the show, like Jack and Tori, it's what happens after and what happens in the moments that we don't see on TV that really matter. Absolutely. And there's some grooms or some people who have been villains who will hold on to that kind of resentment and anger for a long time. One old groom used to comment on my Facebook post, like my public ones from years and years ago. Okay. About maths, just like so long after his run on the show. Yeah. And I'd be like, bro, you got to let it go. <laughs> well, you also reached out to another maths groom this week for a comment, right? <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah. So given the comparisons, as we talked about, I reached out to Harrison Boone to see if he had any comment about the Jack and Tory relationship. So he is obviously still quite active online when he's talking about his season or his portrayal on the show and he has commented on a few of our behind the edit posts so I thought maybe he does want his voice out there so I messaged him just asking if he wanted to give us a quote say anything about the comparisons he replied to me no thanks I'm good fair enough if he doesn't want to speak about it that's fine <laughs> but we'll probably see him in the comments so we'll see what he has to say there Harrison we're still here if you need to say something <laughs> Let's leave it at that, but thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Behind the Edit. If you like this episode, please subscribe and leave us a glowing review. Make sure you follow us on all our socials, join our Facebook group, and sign up to our exclusive maths newsletter. All the links will be in the show notes. And we'll see you next week. Behind the Edit is brought to you by Yahoo Australia, hosted by Lachlan Gurdon and Talia Pritchard. Produced by Katie Brown. Social production by Alexa Tubatini. Yahoo Australia would like to acknowledge the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation the traditional owners of the land on which this podcast was recorded, and pay our respects to elders past and present.